Today we're gonna make one of my favorite dishes, beef short ribs. We're gonna braise them in the oven. I love this one. I hope the taste tester likes it as much as I do. I like to go over all the ingredients. I feel like this is the best way for you to set up a recipe to get it perfect every time. I have four and a half pounds of beef short ribs. These are sometimes called English cut short ribs, but uh, most of the time supermarkets will just call them short ribs. If you're looking at the recipes now and you're a pretty experienced cook, you're probably noticing that almost everything I have here is the exact same ingredients that would go in asabuco. We have two cups of white wine. We have four cups of chicken stock. The chicken stock isn't exact because we're just gonna use enough to basically almost cover the short ribs when we braise them. We also have a little bit of tomato paste, exactly two tablespoons, 14 ounces of plum tomatoes that are just hand crushed or you could even use crushed. I have three onions here. I'm really going for oniony, kind of like almost like pasta alla genovese that we did a while back. I love that dish. That's just like all onions, but trying to go for similar flavors here. And then we have carrots. Probably this is about a cup and a half and probably about a cup and a half of celery. To be exact or not exact, it's three medium carrots and three or four celery ribs. I have 10 cloves of garlic that I just smashed. For our aromatics, we have two little sprigs of rosemary one huge sprig or you know if you want to like actually count these as sprigs we have a bunch of thyme and then we have two dried bay leaves if you have fresh bay leaves use them let's get into searing the short ribs right now every place you buy them they're going to be a little different these are english cut short ribs which means they have a bone okay the meat this way some places will cut them four inches long some places like this will cut them two to three inches long. I actually prefer the smaller ones. You can get a better sear on all of them, build a little bit more flavor, and it's a little better for the person. Sometimes the really large ones, they'll have more fat on them. Fat in the middle is fine. You're not gonna do anything about that. These aren't cheap anymore, guys. These were $11.99 a pound, so I'm using four and a half pounds here, where this is kind of a fancy meal, and or you know, at least it's not an inexpensive meal. You might be able to just kind of take your knife like this, if your knife is very sharp, and you get in there and you can cut a little bit of it off. Once you do that, you get under there, take like a paper towel, you can, you can peel it off like that. All right, this is worth getting off now because no matter how much you sear it, it's not really, uh, it's not gonna break down, it's not gonna cook. Everything else is fine. You could take off a little bit more of this fat if you want. We're gonna do a lot of fat removal from the actual sauce later on. We're gonna season them with salt and pepper, a good amount here. So with this much beef, I would say you could probably use two to three teaspoons of kosher salt. Like a good rule of thumb would be one teaspoon per pound of beef. But since a lot of this weight is bones, you're not gonna need four and a half teaspoons of salt. All right, just gonna flip them over and then we'll roll them around to get all the rest of that coated well. Okay, and then flour I have about, I don't know, a half a cup, a cup, just you're gonna need enough right here to do this job, guys. So go in on all sides and we're going to then knock off all of the excess. Just, just need a very, very thin coating. And then we're gonna put them on the parchment paper. So let's get all of these dredged. I'm gonna use the huge pan. Maybe we can fit them all in one batch. If you, uh, you know, if you got the time, take out a Dutch oven, but with this many, it'll probably, probably have to do two or three batches. We're gonna heat this up to about a four, maybe a five out of 10. We're using stainless. We're gonna let it heat up for about three, four minutes before we put our oil down. All right, guys, this is hot enough now. I only need a couple tablespoons, maybe even one tablespoon. I'm using olive oil. I, I know it's, I'm crazy, right? I'm not using vegetable oil here, just a little bit. Put it down on whatever side you want and let it get brown for a few minutes. It's tempting to put them all in, but if I put them all in, we're probably not going to get a decent sear on them. We'll go in two batches. I, I, I probably could fit them all in there, but you know, I'm doing the best for you guys. That's what I want to do. It smells like beef in here. If I heated my pan up properly, once you grab these, there will be no sticking. So let's see. All right, yep, see, look at that. See how it skates around? There we go. That's nice, that's brown enough. It's gonna hit up all sides, guys. It's gonna take about two to three minutes per side to get them all to look nice and brown like that. That's beautiful. Even though you got some time before, because we're gonna do the veggies next. Heat up your oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I think 300 is a good way to do it. That's exactly how we did the short rib ragu, which that was a hugely popular video recipe. 
uh, for this channel. Basically, you know, you can do four sides, the, the major sides, and you can even do the ends, which would be six sides. It's just how much work you want to do here, but this will build more flavor. So there it is again, just a beautiful color right there. And we'll just keep going, we'll flip them over. Gonna finish off that other batch and we'll move on to the veggies. Gotta have something that you can fit them all in. I can lay them all flat and we'll be able to make our sauce now. We have too much fat in this pan here. You can wipe it down too if it's a little bit more comfortable for you. A four out of 10, maybe even a three out of 10. You don't need a lot of heat here. And then we're gonna put in our onions, our celery, and our carrot. And we're gonna cook these until they get soft, probably about 10 or 12 minutes. Don't rush this step. It's gonna build some good flavor here. So here's all the fat that I took out. It's this much in there, I don't know if you can see it. Probably can't, but you know, it's about four tablespoons I took out. I probably have about two left over in here. If you think you don't have enough now, you could pour a little bit of that back in, or you could just use a tiny bit of olive oil. Just to get these vegetables to cook a little bit quicker, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on them. How much did I put on there? A sprinkle's worth, right? So probably about a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon. Just enough that will pull a little bit of the water out of the veggies quicker. So guys, this has been about eight minutes. You can see how they are, a lot softer. If you think you're burning, you can knock the heat down. You can even put a touch of water in here. That'll stop it from burning right away, guys. I don't wanna put color on these. I just wanna make them soft. We'll give it a couple more minutes. It's been about 12 minutes of getting the veggies soft. I have two tablespoons of tomato paste. And to get the flavor out of the paste even more, we're gonna fry it for a couple minutes. You don't need a lot of heat on it. The, the paste itself is high sugar, so it wants to burn. You can put a tiny bit more oil if you need it. I'm just gonna try to mash it in there with the vegetables, kind of get it all distributed. So we'll let this go for a couple of minutes. And it wouldn't be a sip and feast video if I didn't screw up. The veggies, before you put the paste in, put your garlic in. We're gonna do it now. We're gonna see if we're gonna be all right. The dish might be ruined, guys. Doing what you can, doing a little improvising. If you want to do this even a little bit better, just take another little pan, heat it up, and then do your garlic until it gets golden and then just put it right back in there. We'll make some room on the side here and I think we will be fine. Let's talk about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Tara and I spend a lot of time thinking about food. Between creating recipes, filming, photoing, and writing blog posts, we sometimes don't want to think about food anymore, but we still need to eat and we always want something that tastes great. So when we need to hit the easy button, we rely on HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that provides all the ingredients and instructions you need to create fast and fresh recipes at home. This helps cut back on expensive takeout and since the ingredients travel from the farm to you in less than seven days, you can always count on them to be fresh. HelloFresh has something for everyone. They offer 35 weekly recipes to choose from. And if you've resolved to make 2023 a little healthier, they've got calorie and carb smart recipes as well. And let me tell you, these salsa verde enchiladas were out of this world. So guys, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POG SIP. Jan 21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. And a big thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. All right, we got enough color on the garlic. Well, we got a little bit of color on the garlic. I'm gonna put wine in. Guys, you don't need to put, you don't need to crank it up high yet until you put it in. Keep your head back so you can keep your eyebrows. That is two cups of white wine. I'm using Sauvignon Blanc, but any white, dry white wine would be fine. So that means like Pinot Grigio. If you do a Chardonnay, you wanna use an unoaked version. That means it's not, what's the right word I'm looking for, Tara? Like when you make wine in an oak barrel, what is that called? Fermentation. Fermentation. It's not being fermented in, a, in an oak barrel because oak Chardonnays have a very, very strong flavor and they will dominate everything else in the dish if you cook with it. So now that our wine is in, we can turn it up. And what does the recipe say here? It says five minutes. And it says to scrape the brown bits off the bottom of the pan. Do not say that word in this kitchen ever. Kind of a running joke now, guys, you know. It's been going over about three minutes. It's reduced by about half. Uh, I'm gonna lower this heat down to about a four out of 10. And then we got our 14 ounces of crushed tomatoes, whether you crushed them yourself or bought them from the store, that's fine. Bolt is fine. I have two bay leaves and I, to make it easy, I would say, just tie these together. All right, so guys, we're gonna let this simmer just for a couple minutes, and then we are going to pour this on top of our short ribs, and we're gonna get them in the oven. Uh, don't add a lot of salt here, because this is gonna concentrate in the oven with the salty beef. 
Oh man, that is delicious. So I'm just gonna put some pepper in here right now. Just about that much. All right, and then we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna pour this right on top of the short ribs. I'm just gonna arrange these where they're the lowest they possibly can be right now. Here's our wonderful sauce. I'm just gonna tuck those herbs kind of at the bottom here to let them do their work. So I'm using chicken base. That is low sodium chicken base or reduced sodium it's called. Obviously use your own stock if you have it. So almost covering. It took about three cups to do that. So we're gonna cover this up and then as tight as you can get it, maybe even use two layers of foil. And then we're gonna braise this for two and a half hours in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of your oven. After half that time, so an hour and 15 minutes, go in there and flip your short ribs. And because we covered them really well, almost all the liquid is still in here. It looks like they're, they're definitely cooked, but are they tender? So let's see, like we'll try this one right here, try to poke through and definitely getting some resistance here. Normally it would just kind of, the knife would want to like, like it would almost fall through it. But we're kind of looking for it to be fork tender where we can almost pull it apart. We don't want to turn it into mush. So there is a point where you probably don't want to go over. When we cook it uncovered in the oven at 300 degrees, we're not changing the temperature or anything. This liquid's going to reduce. It's going to go down a little bit and the top of this short ribs will get a little darker on top, but we already got great color. All right, we'll be back in a little while. Could they go longer? Yeah, they probably could. And you know, the longer you cook them up to a point, the more and more fat will render. We already trimmed a lot of the fat off, but let's just check them for tenderness right now. Okay, very tender. Like if I just put it in and I just move this, it's all gonna rip apart. My preferred way to do this is to separate the short ribs now like I'm going to do, and then to put the liquid, whether in here or in another container in the fridge overnight, and all the fat will come to the top. But we're gonna do our best right now to degrease some of the sauce. Here are all of our short ribs. You can also take these and you can broil them, which will kind of like sear off a lot of that outside fat too, which is nice and it'll darken them up a lot. So you can take out all your herbs. One simple way to remove the fat is just with a spoon and just put it in a little bit, and then the fat is all gonna come right like that. Put it on top. And then all the fat is gonna stick to this. So you are using some paper towels here, but <laughs> I tell you, and if you, even if you let this sit for 30 minutes, the fat's gonna naturally wanna rise to the top. If you do this, it's gonna remove a lot of fat. You could also use a bulb, a blaster, which is something you just pull it in. You could pour this into kind of a fat separator, but then you're gonna have to strain it. I want all these vegetables because they're so delicious. I find that this way is pretty easy. If you do wanna put this in the refrigerator overnight, I do recommend straining it first and doing it because all your vegetables are gonna get trapped in the fat. And I really want these vegetables right now, but you can see like that's only two pieces. It is clearing up dramatically. Now there's a lot of fat on the side here. So I'm gonna to go to the side area. I successfully removed a ton of fat, which is all here. This is a lot clearer now. Now, really simple. I'm probably left with about two and a half cups of this delicious sauce, all the garlic, the veggies. Looks really good. Yeah, and I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. Just, just dig in. That's beef on top of a bone. Okay. I could tell you what the stuff is. You could, yeah, it's gonna fall apart fairly easily. See how very tender it is. You don't even need a knife for it, guys. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> guys the sauce i didn't tell you off camera taste it when it comes out season it with salt and pepper after you remove the fat get sauce it exact thank you buddy get it exactly the way you want and then you know serve your ribs serve it over mashed potatoes like this for individuals uh, if you reduce this you could reduce it a lot and you can put the ribs back in and kind of like glaze them up mashed potatoes are one of my favorite things yeah <laughs> that's a piece of garlic right there yeah. All right, so why don't you hold off now and there's a card and pen over there for you. Okay. Not looking. What do you think about it? What was like good? What wasn't? What do you taste? I, I really like the sauce. I think it does. I think you could use like a little bit more flavor though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe like a little bit more salt. But my skills are free.
Yeah, this is great. And she needs a shot. I what? gave it a nine. A nine, huh? All right, well, that, was, that, that surprises me. I thought he was going to give me like a seven after saying all that. It's delicious. There'll be more fat, uh, more meat on this side, I can see. Yeah, super tender, like just falling off. Do you want to give a rating, like a like a impromptu I don't, rating? Yeah, sure. What? I, I give it a 10. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yes.